Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about what you need to know first, uh, what you need to do first before going into the tackle shop. The first thing is what is the type of fishing you want to do, uh, that's the first thing. So uh, in Singapore we have freshwater fishing, we have saltwater fishing and for each type uh, they even branch out into further subcategories. For freshwater fishing, uh, there is uh, luring, there is baiting as well. Uh, generally in Singapore, you can't bait in the local reservoirs, but you can do it in uh, freshwater ponds, uh, places like Auto, like Farmway, uh, where you can actually try out some uh, great uh, freshwater baiting. And then uh, freshwater luring is another thing altogether. Uh, it requires more action, uh, covering a lot of ground. You have to move, move along the banks and move around a lot. And then you have to do a lot of casting. So that's for the freshwater side of the things. Then uh, for the saltwater side, this is actually quite diverse. Uh, you have very light game fishing, light salt game from Ajing. You even have uh, things like uh, shore jigging, and you have uh, pier fishing. Pier fishing. There are many types of pier fishing. It can range from the simple like uh, jigging for tamban, and also you have the multi-species fishing, which is the using small hooks, prawns, or worms to target a variety of different species of fish. And then you also have bigger game fishing from the shore. Things like targeting more of the pelagic species, uh, like queenfish uh, using uh, cable car rigs. You also have even the bottom fishing from uh, a surf casting rod. Or targeting things like a stingray or shark. Uh, that is more of the big game uh, saltwater fishing. This is all uh, inland. And then after that, we are going to talk about offshore. Offshore is uh, quite diverse as well. You have kayak fishing. Yeah which is generally lighter than uh, than the boat fishing. For boat fishing, generally heavier and uh, deeper waters than the kayak fishing. Kayak fishing, it tends to be, uh, the, the sinkers that you use, the size of the weight you use is uh, slightly lesser because you are accessing the, the inner parts, uh, the parts, the structures that are nearer to the shore. Uh, unless, of course, you have a good fish finder and your setup is ready for or the deep sea kayak fishing uh, that, that would be a great experience as well so that is for kayak boat fishing and i haven't men even mentioned uh, saltwater luring so saltwater luring is uh, especially challenging as well uh, targeting fish like a uh, barracuda they, they tend to chase the, the bait the the moving bait the artificial bait yeah so I, i've talked about many different types of uh, fishing in singapore and then the last part uh, which I haven't mentioned yet is the pond fishing. Yeah, so pond fishing is uh, there is saltwater pond fishing, there is the freshwater pond fishing. So it's an enclosed environment. You just uh, cast out your rod. Uh, you want to do luring? You, uh, some ponds allow it, some ponds don't allow it. Uh, or you want to do baiting? You can just uh, leave it there. You can either spin the bait, spin the prawn back. That means uh, reel back towards you slowly, or you can hop the walls along the structures, or just cast and just park the rod. Yeah. So that is uh pond fishing. So uh, to sum it up, we have the freshwater fishing, a variety of freshwater fishing, uh, an even larger variety of the saltwater fishing. And then after that, we have the pond fishing. So that's the first thing you need to know is, uh, is what type of fishing uh, you want to do. Yeah. What type of fish uh, do you want to catch? And if you're not sure about uh, what type of fishing you want to do, you can just check out the words that I mentioned earlier. Just check it out and copy and paste it to YouTube and then just find find it. Yeah. For example, cable car rig, you just find it. What is the how what is the size of the queen fish they catch on the cable car rig? Or, or maybe a uh, surf casting. Uh, what type of uh, stingrays or big fish they catch during surf casting. Yeah. And what is the experience like? I'll copy and paste some of the terms below so you can uh, easily reference. Uh, second thing you need to know uh, before going to the tackle shop is uh, what is your budget for the type of fishing you want to do? And this is linked to the first point. So um in general, okay, in general, I would say that if you want to do freshwater fishing in Singapore, as in just the freshwater luring, once you have purchased all your lures and assuming you do not lose them, okay, this is a, it's unlikely to happen, you definitely will lose some of your lures in the rocks. But if you do not lose them, actually luring will be the most affordable for you. Yeah. Because all you have to do is buy the lures once, uh, assuming they don't get stuck and what you can use it for a pretty long time. But of course, the operational expenditure of a luring is that you have to replace the lures uh, 
here and then. And then uh, you also might have to buy new lures uh, depending on the situation. Yeah. So that is for freshwater lure. If you want really uh, affordable cost, you know, things like soft plastics, they can be really, really cheap. Just a few dollars for a pack of uh, six or a pack, pack of uh, five or six soft plastics. And then a jig head, probably uh, five dollars, five ninety or six dollars to get uh, four or five jig heads. Yeah. So that uh, 11 or 12 dollars will probably last you uh, a while until you, until you lose all of it yeah so that is for the freshwater fishing another affordable uh, option is uh, pier fishing yeah pier fishing things like the sabiki rig uh, jigging for tambans very cheap the the whole rig itself uh, uh, you can buy it from tackle shops uh, probably 90 cents to two dollars yeah, or even three dollars yeah you buy it buy some sabiki rigs uh, I usually cut it in half so I can use it uh, two times and then uh, you buy some sinkers they're only like 50-60 uh, cents I think 30 cents for the small one so so uh, the next thing for sabiki drinking normally we don't use a uh, prawn but uh, you can also buy some prawn like buy maybe five dollars six dollars worth of prawn so you can easily swap to multi-species fishing so you can do both at the same time concurrently if you have uh, two setups yeah and then uh, if you have an additional setup, you can even do the, the surf casting or even cable car rig for for queen fish. After that, we talk about a slightly higher level, which is the pond fishing. The reason why pond is slightly more expensive is because you have to pay to use the pond. So you can expect to pay about maybe thirty dollars to sixty dollars, sixty plus dollars for pond fishing. You also have to buy the bait. Yeah. So imagine uh, the normal baiting that you're doing. You're adding an additional cost, which is the paying to use the prawn. The pond, yeah, sorry. So that is the second level pond. So if you want to go pond fishing, maybe uh, once a week, and if you're going to place like maybe saltwater pond fishing, you can expect to play maybe 64, 65, 66, or even up to 70 dollars once a week. Then you multiply by four, it will be almost uh, 300 dollars. So you must uh, uh, know that and put that inside your budget. And then slightly higher level is the Kayak fishing. Kayak fishing, you can pay uh, for a rental of a kayak, I think probably about single kayak, about $70 to $80, like that. Yeah, and the tandem, it can go up to maybe $120 to $140 or $50. Yeah, if you add a guide, it will be definitely be more expensive. So, uh, that is for kayak fishing. So, if you want to go kayak fishing maybe uh, four times a week, it will be slightly higher than the price of the, slightly higher than the price that you pay for the pond fishing. And don't forget, you also have to get the bait yeah, for kayak fishing. So uh, if you buy some prawns, maybe you add a few dollars to that. If you want to use live prawns, it's slightly more expensive. Yeah, so that is for kayak fishing. Uh, after that, of course, is the boat fishing. After that is definitely the boat fishing. So boat fishing, uh, now the prices have uh, depressed quite a bit. In the past, uh, during the COVID, because of the restriction of the number of packs, right, uh, prices could go up to I think that one that time I was even paying about close to maybe 140, 150 per pack. Right, right now it, it has gone down significantly. Now it's about hundred dollars back to the normal level, the pre-COVID levels. Hundred dollars to hundred twenty. Maybe if you want to do a private charter, it can go up to 130, 140, but but it's definitely much more affordable than last time. So so in general, uh let me sum it up here. Okay, you have the Baiting and uh, we we just well, I'll just classify it as shore, okay shore, and then on the other level is uh, pond, on the other level is the offshore kayak fishing, then offshore boat fishing, and then uh, the highest level is definitely the offshore overseas, yeah, offshore overseas, which is uh, going to places like uh, Indonesia, going to Malaysia Rompin, going to uh, Japan going to do big game fishing in Maldives yeah so so this, this uh, definitely will be more expensive uh, yeah. it makes sense because you need to pay for the plane ticket the ferry ticket you need to pay for the accommodations you need to pay for the food you need to pay for renting a setup and then you need to pay for the boat yeah and then the third thing is the capital expenditure the how much the upfront investment that you're gonna put in yeah so uh, here's where you really want to think about it um, do you want to get a hundred dollar setup uh, $300 setup, uh, $500 setup, or if you want to go the extreme, you can even get a $1,000 setup. You can get a like a, you can get a custom, a custom made rod, paired up with a reel, probably a $300 reel. Uh, yeah, 
a thousand dollar setup if you if you really want to go to the extreme so so it the capex also matters because uh, the initial phase uh, not only is is the money that is sink in immediately you also must take note that if the rock breaks or if you lose it at sea which can happen you know sometimes uh, people have lost things on the kayak uh, many times many times if they don't put the float yeah or they don't tie the rock to the kayak so uh, if you lose it then how are you going to recover this uh, expenditure yeah so we have the 100 200 dollars setup the basic ones uh, of course at the extreme and you have the aliexpress setups are uh, the very very cheap ones that are uh, uh maybe 30 20 30 dollars yeah so and then you must also think about uh quality uh, generally the more you spend you will get a higher quality but then uh do you want to go all the way to the extreme yeah that, that is the question you have to ask yourself yeah definitely if you want to spend on a custom rod or or rods that are maybe in the 300 400 500 dollar range right yeah you definitely get a quality but uh are you willing to put down that money immediately especially if you are a student you are studying i understand uh some of you that watch my channel you're students uh some of my supporters yeah they're students so so you need to think about this yeah and then talk to your parents uh discuss with them uh, uh how are you going to ensure that you maybe you take good care of this 200 400 500 dollar rod yeah and how are you going to finance it are you going to pay one shot or are you going to pay in installment or things like that yeah yeah so so uh to sum it up uh, very simply before you go to the tackle shop, before you actually decide what you want to do, yeah, you know the type of fishing you want to do, number one. Uh, number two, uh, know what is the recurring expenditure you need to spend. Yeah. Number three, you need to know what is the capital expenditure, which is the initial uh, phase you want to do it. Yeah. And then uh, the very last thing, which I did not mention earlier, is... Uh, and you might not know it at the start, but you gotta keep asking yourself uh, this question as you start fishing. Uh, how how into it are you going to be? Yeah, because uh, it will actually affect the number two, which is the operating expenditure. Are you gonna fish as a monthly affair? Are you gonna fish as a weekly affair? Are you gonna do it daily? Yeah, if you're gonna do it daily, maybe you can switch to something like a uh, luring or baiting, where where you already purchase the lures, you just try not to lose them and then continue to fish. Just keep fishing and fishing. Get better and better at your skill. Yeah. Or if you want to do it as a monthly or, or bi-weekly affair or maybe even a fortnightly affair, maybe you can rent a kayak monthly, a $70 kayak, just go out to sea every month and then there's something you look forward to every month as a family event. Yeah. Or maybe you think think of it as a, more of a pastime with friends. Maybe you want uh, you don't spend so much money but you want to spend time with friends. You want to do things like a surf casting for example you have a chance of getting a really big fish and at the same time uh, put up a barbecue and then uh, just, just talk with your friends uh, have a couple of drinks uh, have a couple of uh, skewers or marshmallows and then you just wait wait for the fish to come and then after when the fish comes you can even uh, put it on the barbecue so, so it depends on what type of uh, experience you're looking for yeah, and that is the part that is very difficult uh, for me to answer for you yeah, it's for you to decide for yourself uh, what our experience uh, or if you are on the other extreme, you really want to face the waves, face the currents, fight the big fish, you want to go on the boat yeah, with your friends and go as a monthly affair. Yeah. And then that, that, is also, that is also a different type of investment from what I mentioned earlier, the luring as well as baiting and uh, waiting on shore. Or if you just want to get fish, uh, if you just want to get fish, things like your sure catch ponds or, or very enclosed areas, certain types of pond fishing, uh, yeah, certain types of pond fishing, but you just want to bring the fish home, yeah, you might consider that uh, for yourself. Yeah. For, for, for just uh, uh, fishing for three hours, within three hours, on to catch uh, three fish, bring the three fish home and then eat it. Yeah. So, in a, in a sense, make your 30, make your uh, 50, 60 dollars back by earning it back in the, the form of fish yeah so th that is the thing you need to ask yourself yeah so uh that, that's all i wanted to talk about today uh, before heading to the tackle shop uh, i hope you do watch this video it is a pretty long video but i will break it into certain parts uh, so you can actually uh skip to the part that you really want to see uh, by looking at the description below so uh, that is all for this video 
I hope you enjoy yourself and I'll come up with more of these uh, tutorial videos soon. So I'll see you guys again in the next one. Cheers.